when routine is good. Face mask recognition and what are you missing? Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello and welcome to a Wednesday. It is August 12th, 2020, day 305 of Gotta Get On Ellen. Oh my, all kinds of things happening in the news today. Apple has been asked, I don't know if they will comply, Apple has been asked to come up with a face recognition for when you're wearing your mask. I guess it would have to go solely on your eyes then. I don't know, do you use the face recognition feature on your phone? I know my husband does. I do not. I I just, maybe I was just too lazy to set it up. I don't know. I think at first, well, it started with the thumbprint, and that just never seemed to work for me. So I just gave up on it and went back to my code. So I guess when the face mask, or excuse me, when the face recognition came out, I was figured it was going to be as annoying and un- unreliable as the thumbprint was. So I just kept with my code. But it works for my husband. He likes it. But I guess, yes, it's not going to recognize your face when you have a mask over it. So they're thinking about coming up with ways to get around that because God forbid we type in a four-digit code. (laughs) It's just so overwhelming. (laughs) I don't know. There's sometimes I'm just like, you know what, people? We can still do this. You know, we can punch in a code. We can remember phone numbers. Whose phone number do you know besides your own? Do you know your spouse's? Every once in a while, I recite it so that I keep it top of mind. Uh, And I I quiz my husband. I actually haven't quizzed him in a while to make sure that we know each other's phone numbers in case something happens. We don't have our phone. We're in an accident, what have you. There's no need to... Memorize phone numbers anymore. That's the only phone number I know. I don't know anybody else's phone number. No one's. Couldn't tell you anybody's phone number off the top of my head besides my own and my husband's. So, yeah, you lose your phone now. You are in big trouble. Big trouble. I'm sorry. I'm laughing at Tucker. She's uh, all full of energy this morning. She's over there playing with her toys. She can't decide which one she wants. She's going from the monkey to the wreath. Back to the wreath. Back to the monkey. She's just having a grand old time over there. Now, she's she's looking over at me right now, and I'm not looking at her. Oh, oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Here she comes. She's bringing her monkey over. I guess she's going to be okay. What she does is when she wants me to play with her and I don't, she starts growling at me. And if I continue to ignore her, she'll start barking at me. Uh, I don't think she's going to do that right now. It's awfully early to be this energetic, Tucker. I mean, really. Gosh. She's usually sleeping right about now. So uh, we always love to see Tucker without when she has a lot of energy. But I digress, as usual. Just finished Rob Lowe's memoir, Stories I Only Tell My Friends. I believe this was his first one. And I think he has a second one out now. So this one's pretty old. Not sure when it came out. It's been a while though. Um, but very good. You know, I just love these celebrity memoirs. They're always so fascinating and interesting to me. And you know, Rob Lowe grew up in Malibu. Now he says when he moved to Malibu when he was a kid, it was nothing like it is now. And he was actually in from like the, you know, poorer area. But they were all little bungalows back then, not these big, huge mansions that they are now. Uh, But he grew up with Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen 
and you know he just ran in these circles that you know was celebrity ridden so to speak he had done a i think it was some type of after school special and he was going over to his girlfriend's house to watch it and i can't remember can't remember the name of the girlfriend but uh she had a famous mother i can't remember the name of the famous mother either and he was kind of bummed because she thought he thought they were going to her her mother's house to watch the the you know his special and she, they ended up going to her dad's and her dad was somebody he had never heard of before at the time i mean he's about 15 16 years old uh by a guy he her dad was a guy named Cary Grant. <laughs> and he says, you know, in my defense, he hadn't been in a movie since I, I had been in diapers. You know, but he goes on to talk about how he was talking to him in his Cary Grant voice. And wow. And he said he got a high praise from Cary Grant. That he said, wow, you're really talented. You're going to go places. And uh, yeah, that prediction came true. So uh, yeah, it was really interesting. I really just love to read about the lives behind the scenes of these stars. It's fascinating to me. Uh, but yeah, you know, Rob Lowe, one of those ones that's just been in it for so long. It's funny when he starts talking about some of the movies. Uh, I mean, I still, and I know I mentioned this the other day, could recite to you Oxford Blues. <laughs> just loved loved that movie so much and then of course young blood ah young blood oh with the hockey and patrick swayze yeah so anyway i'm sorry i'll cool off now some very upsetting news to share with you about sports the big 10 the whole conference has postponed the fall football season. They have discussed taking it up in the spring. But meanwhile, no Penn State football. People around here are going to be very, very bummed. I hope this is not a precursor to professional football because I need me some professional football. You know, I'm looking in my memories in uh, Facebook, and a lot of them are showing that I was watching preseason football around this time hey I'm willing to give up the preseason as long as I can get the regular season I saw a little uh, story about Carson Wentz uh, the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles talking about how he put on a lot of weight purposely on the offseason so that he's not so injury prone here's hoping fingers crossed Stanley Cup playoffs the finals start tonight Somehow, the Flyers are the top seed. Yes! Right. We'll see how that goes. It's funny because, you know, they had they had been playing their season before the pandemic hit. And then, you know, they were on hold for all this time. So it seems like they were back for like two weeks. <laughs> and now it's the playoffs. I don't know. Good luck to the Flyers. Philadelphia loves their sports teams. That is for sure. Another little tidbit I saw in the news, apparently there's a shortage of Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I'm a pepper. Are you a pepper? I do drink Diet Dr. Pepper. I have kind of gone back to Diet Coke uh, over Diet Dr. Pepper for the last few months. I, You know, I, I go on and off when it comes to soda. Sometimes I, I drink a lot of it, and then sometimes I don't drink it at all. I'm on the soda right now. I'm on it. It's tough. Not only is there a shortage of Dr. Pepper, there's a shortage of aluminum cans. And that's what I usually drink out of. I usually try and wait to get like a sale for like the 12 pack of cans because that way, you know, I can just put a couple in, a fr in the fridge at a time. It's, they're easy to take out uh, to the deck when I'm like getting some sun or what have you. But they're saying that there's going to be a problem with the cans, which leads me to my topic for the day. I've been hearing once again that there is a major shortage of paper towels. I think we're good on paper towels. Thank goodness. I have not been able to find any Hidden Valley Ranch light dressing. 
since the pandemic hit. It's crazy. So I wanted to hear from you. What is it that you can't find? Linda says diet root beer, soda, hard to find. Lysol spray and Clorox wipes, if found, are limited. And today my hairdresser told me she's been having difficulty getting some of the hair dyes. I've heard that as well. I have heard that. I don't think the Clorox wipes are getting any better. I, a while ago, had gotten a big three-pack of the big, big Clorox wipes, and I think that I'm only on my second one, so I'm okay with that for now. Michelle says, I've been out of whole wheat past, uh, pastry flour and I've not been able to find it anywhere. Whole wheat pastry flour is just a lighter whole wheat flour used in baking. I've also been having trouble finding dog food. Marcy says, Febreze air freshener fabric dye. like to make tie dyes and liquid hand soap refills. I'm going to have to um, just break down an order from uh, Bath & Body Works, I think. I'm starting to get a little low on my soaps. I was waiting to see if they were going to have a sale. I don't think they're going to have one. I don't think they're going to have a sale. I haven't seen a sale in months. So we'll see how that pans out. Jim says, when the pandemic first started, I couldn't find hamburger in the meat department. Now, I had heard about that, and I went out and I got me two uh, containers of meat. We don't use a lot of ground meat in the house, and we actually just used one of them last week. Joe made some meatballs that we made with spaghetti, and we have one more. That we will probably use for lasagna one of these days. Been a, it's been a long time. I need me some lasagna in my life. Corinne says she's having a, a hard time finding napkins. Just plain old everyday napkins. Libby says Lysol. Kim says, don't worry. I'm sure Suave is on it, referring to my lack of Hidden Valley Ranch light. She says, they make paper towels now. Get ready for Suave Ranch dressings. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Eve says Lysol and Clorox wipes. And Kate says, I can never seem to get disinfectant wipes. Driving me crazy that they are still so elusive after all this time. So, yeah, the Clorox wipes is a very well known. Uh, it's been a problem. But I thought that they really kind of have over had overcome that. I had seen it quite a few times in Walmart or what. I never saw it in the grocery store. Um but I don't typically go down that aisle in the grocery store because I buy all that stuff at Walmart. But I, I guess maybe I guess maybe I should keep a lookout. You can't stock up too far ahead on those things because they'll dry up, right? I mean, it takes a while for them to dry up. But, but I'm good right now. I think I'm good. I got two of the big, huge containers. So... Anyway, for today's blog post, we are talking about routines and when they can be good. Now, I posted a picture of me uh, doing my favorite thing this summer, laying on my lounge chair on the dock, watching the boats go by and reading a book. Yeah, I've been doing a little too much of this and not enough work. I've been talking about this for a while. I'm having a really tough time. Now, it's tough for me to get motivated sometimes because I do work from home. I am my own boss. <laughs> I do make sure to always get my podcast and blog on every day, just about. After that, though, I've been majorly slacking. I think there are a couple of things going on with me. With the pandemic, we aren't getting our typical social situations. So maybe I'm soothing myself with lots of free time in the sunshine. Could be. Also, it was such a cool, miserable spring that I want to make sure I take advantage of all the nice days I can. Because here's, here's something interesting that I realized the other day. I love to sit in the sun. Love, love, love it. I love to get some color. And I know it's really bad for you, but I love to get some color. Um, so I'm usually gung-ho in May, June, July. But then, like, by mid-July, I'm tired of it. Hot. Now it's just hot. And I'm usually, you know, just waiting for the shade to cover the deck so I can sit. I still like to sit outside, but in the shade rather than the sun. That is not the case this year. I am trying to get out in that sun as often as I possibly can. I am for sure taking more advantage this year than I do in other years. Because like I said, 
I usually get really, really, really tan in the spring and early summer, and everybody's like, oh, my gosh, you're so tan, you're so tan. And then I start to freak out because I'm like, I don't want to be too tan. I want to be like the tan mom or something from New Jersey. If, you, if you're from New Jersey, you probably know who I'm talking about. Um, so I lay off a little bit, but I haven't been this year, and I'm not too tan. I mean, I'm not really worried about that, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm not getting tired of anything this year except for work. <laughs> maybe, though, as my husband pointed out, maybe I'm just tired of working really hard without seeing any financial results. <laughs> maybe. It could be any or all of those things. But I do have to find a way to get my butt in gear. That is for sure. When it comes to having a productive day, I think routine is key. It's so much easier to stick with a routine that you are used to than trying to wing it, because that's what I've been doing. I'm just like, you know what? We'll see what happens with the day. I'm not really writing things out in my daily planner like I normally do. Yeah. Write things down in your planner, at least a rough draft of your day. Write down the things you want to accomplish, and that will help keep you on task. Don't take on too much, because that will set you up for failure. Then you just won't do anything. You should also... Put off tasks that will suck up all your time, such as email. We all tend to be attached to our accounts all day, but once you start responding to emails, you are typically working on other people's agendas. So limit your access to it. Maybe check in a little while after you get to work, not first thing, like get to work, you know, set your priorities and your intentions for the day, uh, write down the actions that you need to take, and then check your email. Check again after lunch and maybe about an hour before you go home so you can take care of any pressing issues before your day is done. If you're anything like me, you tend to put off the things you don't want to do. What happens is you end up getting much less done because you keep putting off what you don't want to do. My course of action in this situation is tackle the things I don't enjoy first. It usually works. Sometimes it doesn't, but it usually works. Get them out of the way. They have to be done, so just do it. Stop torturing yourself and get it out of the way. Not only will it be done, finished, but you will no longer be torturing yourself with the dread of doing that task. Like it or not, there are things we have to do that we don't enjoy. Cleaning, food shopping, doing laundry, you know, all those things. Still has to be done. Get it out of the way and move on with your day. Isn't it the greatest feeling when a difficult or annoying task is done? I love when I finally, like, clean up my kitchen table and, you know, scrub the house from top to bottom and walk in the front door and you're like, wow, my house is so clean. Yeah, love it. I saw saw a meme on Facebook the other day that was so funny saying, um, I haven't had to do emergency cleanups because of unexpected company in a while and it shows <laughs> yes we had some people here over the weekend so uh, I had done the cleanup and so I'm feeling pretty good the house is looking okay for the most part then we've now we've got crap all over from that's left over from the party but I'm slowly making my way through it once you get these things done it will give you momentum to keep going And ticking more things off your list. And then you can end the day with a bunch of check marks next to your to-do list. So just get her done. Oh my, it is hump day already. What tasks can you do first thing to get out of the way and then have a most productive day? Just do it. Go on out there today and be your badass self. You know I'm cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hope List, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Get her done.